Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for um, clicking on my presentation to watch. This is Keys to Success Family Edition. Um, I'm Randy Bibbins clark I am the Associate Director of Academic Success in the Creighton Edge. Um, the Creighton Edge is a collection of offices um, with four main areas that um, exist to make sure that students are successful while they're here at Creighton, and then to ensure that they are successful in their next steps, whether that's moving into a career or on to graduate or professional school. And um, we have four main areas um, are the John P. Fahey Career Center, um, our pre-professional advising functions, um, disability services, and then academic success, which is the area um, that I work in. Um, hopefully you are all kind of safe at home and hanging in there with your recent grad or soon to be recent grad, depending on your schedule um, and kind of adjusting to whatever the restrictions are in your area. I'm sure that you are having a lot of fun and that everything is um, going well at this time of the year when seniors are really ready to um, get moving on the next phase of their life. And speaking of next phase of their life, that's why we are here today. Um, this is my sixth year at Creighton. I'm just finishing my sixth year. Um, and summer preview is really one of my favorite times of year. And although it's a little bit different this year, I'm really excited to be um, starting this journey with you and with your student. Um, I love working with students through transitions. And really, this is one of the most kind of profound transitions a student can make. Um, so hopefully today's session will help you um, and your get yourself prepared for the change that's coming ahead and to help you um, help prepare your student for the change that's coming ahead. So um, today, the goals of this session are to give you some perspective on the academic transition that students and families will face in this first year at Creighton, um, some insight into the resources that are available to help your, um, you and your child with that transition, and then some ideas about how to best support your child before and during that transition to Creighton starting right now. Um, what you'll probably um, notice is that I won't talk a lot about academic content in this presentation um, because really what we find is that the biggest academic hurdle for students is really the academic mindset and the willingness to look at this experience um, as a new and different one rather than just an extension of high school, which is a place where over the course of four years, most of our students have learned to become really successful um, and they've really um, developed a set of tools and strategies that helps them um, to get them to this point. Um, and what we want is for students to come in and um, understand that they have that set of skills, but also to recognize that although this is still school, it's a completely different environment. So they may need to start with that foundation that they've built, um, but really to ch some, some things will likely change and there will likely be some challenges that they probably didn't anticipate. Um, and what we find is that it's usually more challenging for students who walk in um, onto campus kind of thinking that they know exactly what they're going to how things are going to go and exactly what tools that they'll need um, rather than kind of expecting some of those differences um, to exist which they will so we'll talk a lot about mindset in this presentation and how you can prepare yourself and your um, child for that mindset change um, so speaking of change um, that's what we see here there is a change coming ahead not just for you but for your um, child as well um, not, yeah, not just for um, your child, which we talk about a lot, but there'll be a, really a change for you as um, parents and family members as well. Um, I want you to just kind of think about your role as a parent right now of a uh, high school student. Um, typically, you are sort of an all, you do lots of different things, you fill lots of different roles. Um, you are the um, financial planner, you're the time manager, kind of a personal assistant. Um, you help with the laundry, you help with the schedule. Uh, maybe you are a part-time tutor, you do some advising, um, you're their cheerleader, you're their counselor, um, you fill all these different kinds of roles. Um, and as a parent of a um, high school student, you, although your student is growing in autonomy, you really are still the primary uh, person in the relationship who the school is communicating with and you're the responsible party really. Um, so even though you might not know everything, you do have, you, you can know everything um, really, um, and you sort of know what's happening when, who your student is with, um, what's happening at school. Um, you probably have some access to their grades and things like that through different programs that most high schools use. Um, and that really is going to change in just a couple of short months. Um, so starting to get prepared for that now and how you will maintain kind of the 
sort of communication and relationship that you want to with your students so that you can continue to support them through all of the um, transitions that they're going to be going through. How will you relate the question I would like you to start to consider is how will you um, manage that transition? What sort of things needs to start changing right now so that you can still be there as that supportive person when you don't have the proximity um, and when you don't have the full knowledge of everything that's going on. You have to really rely on your student to be that uh, responsible party and relay information to you really. Um, so um, the first thing that we just like to point out is some of the very concrete differences between high school and college. And these are things that people typically um, kind of people know, but it's really important to think about how much they will change um, the actual experience that your child is going to have and how, again, some of the skills and um, um, strategies that you and your student have used to help them be successful may not be as applicable in this different environment. Um, so again, just in that um, second and third column, you see lots of differences in the amount of time students spend in class um, in high school compared to college, how much time um, studying outside of class, which is a huge difference for most students. Um, although that 35 hours a week um, will still be kind of the, the expectation because a, a college student should still be a full-time student with only about 16 hours of actually in-seat time every week, they will need to make up lots of those hours on their own. And most students really aren't used to doing that on their own, um, particularly when, um, as you can see in that, um, this homework and exams row in high school, um, there are frequent uh, opportunities for assessment typically. So their homework assignments, tests are fairly um, regular and maybe a couple weeks, you know, between tests. Um, whereas in college, those, do, those homework assignments will be infrequent. Oftentimes students, uh, faculty members will um, um, give like maybe practice problems and they give reading assignments and all of those things that are, um, that are not required, there's not anyone, no one is gonna check up on those things to make sure that they did them, but they're still expected to do them in order to do well on an exam that maybe is five or six weeks away. And in some classes it will, will not be uncommon that they only have a midterm and a final exam, which means um, that there are not a lot of opportunities to earn grades, which can be pretty stressful for some students. And without that accountability of having homework assignments and regular exams, for some students will have a hard time keeping up with that. Um, the expectation to do those things on their own when they likely haven't had to do much of that in the past. Um, other, um, really the biggest challenge that we see is linked to that bottom um, row of freedom. Um, time management really is the num number one struggle for most freshmen. And again, it's not a lot of the content. Um, once students are spending the right amount of time and really managing themselves, so they're doing the reading, they're doing, um, things outside of the classroom on their own, they can manage the content most of the time. Um, but until, but without that accountability, um, it can be very hard to make that transition. Again, most students will be coming from a high school schedule where they had class all day, they probably had a practice, then maybe they went home and had some, some sort of time, maybe they had a job, their parents, um, someone was kind of seeing them in the afternoon, encouraging them to get to bed at a certain time, encouraging them to do their homework, um, and then they would start all over the next day. Um, in high in college, most of our students, again, unless they're a varsity athlete, will go from those very busy schedules to having about 15 um, hours of scheduled time, and the rest of the time is uh, it's up to them to manage um, all of that studying and things on their own. So routines and structure are really important and they can take some time to develop. And in the meantime, we want students to be using the resources that exist on campus to help them make that transition. Um, so speaking of resources, um, one of the, hold on, one of my graphics doesn't look like it's showing up. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so um, one of the things that we really encourage as far as this mindset is concerned is a changed perspective about the idea of using resources, academic success resources like tutoring, academic coaching, and some of the other 
programs that we have for students. A lot of students come into college, um, come into Creighton, and they're hesitant to use these academic resources, particularly because they, a lot of our students haven't had to use those in the past. And for a lot of students in high school, things like tutoring or meeting with a counselor, those things were sort of seen as remedial and they were for things that were available for students who needed that extra support. In fact, a lot of our students who start um, as freshmen were oftentimes tutors for other, um, other students and they hadn't had to use those resources on their own. At Creighton, we really have a very robust and a healthy use of those types of resources. Um, and we've worked really hard over the last few years to kind of change the mentality and to really reduce the stigma around using academic success resources. And we have a group of students who really want to be successful. Um, so these it, um, resources exist for a reason. Um, what's really great about our academic success resources is that they're free, they're voluntary, and they're available to all students. So we have students who are coming in and out of those doors for tutoring and academic coaching who are getting A's in their classes or B pluses and they wanna do better. And we have students coming in those doors who are struggling. So there really isn't a, um, a um, stigma attached to coming into the edge and saying, hey, here's what I need or here's what I want. As you can see here from this slide, we have last uh, year, we had almost 7,000 tutoring visits. Um, and it's a running joke that we do have the data to show that it's not the same 7,000 students um, every day uh, coming in. About Really about 35% of Creighton undergraduates will use academic success resources at some point. We tutor in over 120 courses and we had almost 1,000 academic coaching appointments last year. And again, that ranges from, um, runs the gamut of different types of students, from students who were struggling. Um, I have students, one, a couple of years ago, I had every student from um, the honors program in putting together study schedules. Um, and that's really what we encourage students to do. Um, we recognize that students who are willing to ask questions and use the resources when they need them are more successful and are less anxious. And one of the things that we do is, um, and that you as a parent can help with, is that we encourage students to use this uh, tutoring or academic coaching right out of the gate before any issues arise because it's a must, much different prospect when a student is walking in those doors um, to meet with a chemistry tutor or to set up a study schedule with an academic coach on their own. Um, and they're just like, well, this is something that everybody's suggesting, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it um, rather than waiting until they've had that first bio exam or that first psychology exam or they're finding um, themselves four weeks into the semester and they still haven't been able to figure out how to sit down um, and start to study on their own. Um, it's a much different um, psychological prospect to do that um, on your own up front rather than to wait. So encourage that right away. Our tutors have, are students who have taken the courses that they're going to tutor. So we have a peer-based uh, nationally certified program. All of our tutors have had have earned an A or a B plus in the course that they're going to tutor and they have taken that specific class. They're not generalists. Um, they are specific um, course specific tutors and they've been um, recommended and endorsed by a faculty member who taught them in that course. They also have going, they go through about 10 hours of training with us during their first year and then ongoing training throughout their any subsequent semesters that they spend with us. And a lot of our tutors have been with us for multiple semesters starting with their sophomore year. So this is a list of all of the resources that we have and all of these are clickable links. I'm not gonna click on all of them now, but this slide is here so that you can come back to it. All of our resources are available at success.creighton.edu. Um, we have, that's the place where students go to make appointments, just check course availability and schedules of our different types of tutoring, all of our contact information for both the tutoring program and academic success, um, and details with how to schedule appointments. Right now, our appointments are available both, are all, everything is online and in the fall, we will continue to offer online resources along with our face-to-face -face resources. There are also links to other resources on campus like the Writing Center, um, the Communication Center, which is basically a tutoring center for students who are taking speech courses um, or any course where they need to give a speech, student counseling services, disability services, etc. So success.creighton.edu is a place where you can start and find links to other places on campus. And then we also have a, um, a page with different academic tips and tools. So there are videos, um, downloadable 
um, like study schedules, um, things like that, other helpful resources that students can use in order to help them be successful in this transition. And one thing I do want to point your attention to is this Hippocampus Success Seminar, which is a seminar that we run on Wednesdays in September. That is a great program for students to help get acclimated to um, the academic rigor and expectations of the Creighton classroom. So it's a great place to learn those academic transition skills. It's a great place to meet people. We usually have about 60 to 70 students registered for that program. There's nothing else going on really for freshmen on Wednesday nights in um, September because that's Wednesday nights are our Greek night and freshmen first semester aren't involved in that community. So there's not a lot going on. Um, and it's again, it's another great way to stay busy, meet some more faculty and do a little bit of networking and registration for that is available right now. So you can go ahead and click it and register. Um, next up, just a reminder um, about the power of mistakes. So your child is about to enter a situation where they are going to be doing all kinds of new things. Um, and this is really one of my favorite graphics. If I can use this pencil here, let's see if that actually can be. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is really one of my favorite graphics here. It shows the intentionality of our actions at the bottom and learning um, opportunities along the side. And these stretch mistakes are the types of mistakes um, that students are gonna be making during this first year and really throughout this whole um, college process because your child is going to be putting um, themselves into some very intentionally into situations that require, require all kinds of skills and knowledge that they simply don't have yet. And we wouldn't, we want them to do this. We don't want it, we wouldn't want it any other way. This is an opportunity for them to try new things and to really um, figure out who they are and who they want to be. Um, these, um, with these brand new experiences um, will come mistakes. Um, I mean, just think about a lot of the things that you have done as an adult. A lot of the best things that we've done came with a lot of mistakes made along the way. And there really isn't any other way for those things to have happened. Um, because we really learned through those experiences, but it can be really stressful because of the way that we sometimes frame college for our, for our kids. It's a very big deal. It's setting the stage for the rest of their lives. It's expensive. You have to pass this class to get to this class to get to this class. Um, and all of those things added up can make success seem really precious, um, which can make it really hard for students to put themselves out there sometimes. Um, and there can be this tendency to miscategorize all mistakes as these high stakes mistakes, which are really things that we have to avoid. Um, and they teach us things, but, the, but the, the risk involved is so high that we, that it becomes very anxiety producing and sometimes students want to avoid those things. So I think as parents and as um, faculty staff and um, people at the university, it's really up to us to help students to keep those um, um, thoughts in perspective and to help our students recognize when those mistake or op mistakes are oppor opportunities to learn. Um, if mistakes happen, which again, they will, um, we can help out our kids by helping, to helping them to identify the people and the places that could help and then empower them to take whatever action needs to be taken to manage those. Um, so again, when that happens, we just, another, Thing that we would like you to remember is that you are placing your child into a place that is um, built for students to have these kinds of growth experiences. So we are here to catch them if they fall. Um, and most stakes, although they may feel, most mistakes, although they may feel high stakes, they, they truly aren't. And again, we can help students to get through those if they don't feel so afraid of making those mistakes that they don't tell us when they do. Um, and then that really can compound things. So we wanna really embrace the power um, of mistakes and help them to learn from those um, rather than um, doing any, doing whatever else. Okay, so another thing to remember is this idea that things will likely change for many students. Um, a lot of our students come into college thinking that they know what they want to do and who they wanna be. Um, but a lot of them will discover um, because maybe the things that they were excited about in high school just don't um, give them as much passion when they start to take those similar types of classes in college. Maybe classes are more difficult than they anticipated and, that's, and they 
discover that that's not the path that they want to follow, or maybe they get exposed to something that they never even imagined before because they never heard of it or they never had the opportunity to take classes in a certain area or they never had the opportunity to volunteer or to join a club in a certain area. And suddenly something new sparks with them and they discover what, what it is that they want to be. Um, so again, um, sometimes that can be a very anxiety producing experience for students to go through those changes, particularly if they have um, shared a dream with their family and friends. Um, oftentimes this is like a, a, a medical school dream or something else. Um, and they feel worried that they're going to disappoint the people around them if they make a change. So sort of thinking about how you can help your child through that um, transition if it does happen and how you're setting that up right now um, to help them to understand that this is a time of uh, transition and there may be some change and it's a time of discernment and that's really what Creighton is set up for is to help students discern things. Um, we have a uh, system where students are not allowed to even declare their major until, the, until their sophomore year and that is really done intentionally because we do encourage that discernment and we want them to take some classes and really decide that that's what they want to do um, before they get locked in right away. Um, we have a lot of students who are um, undecided and that again can be an anxiety producing situation when they feel when students feel like everybody else kind of knows exactly what they want to do. Um, the fact is, is that about 80% of college students will change their intended major at least once. So we know that even the students who are looking very confidently about exactly what they want to do, we can tell, um, we can look at them and know that a lot of them are going to change that. Um, but your freshmen may not be able to look around and see the same thing. So they're worried. Um, so we encourage students to take classes um, that look like they might give them some interest. We have um, encouraged students to meet with career counselors very early on. It is not too early to do that that freshman year um, to help with that decision. And we have a program for students who are truly undecided and they are interested in really doing some intentional discernment. We have a program called Edge Scholars. And again, this is a clickable link. And that is a program that starts the second semester of the freshman year where students can um, work with a career center advisor. Um, they do a lot of um, assessments and inventories to kind of assess what their areas of interest are. They have um, opportunities to network and do some informational interviewing with different um, professions and then they share those with each other. And then after that first semester, there are some additional if students decide to opt into that program for their sophomore, junior and senior year, there are some additional perks that are um, uh, related to that program that you should check out. And again, we encourage students to um, law, uh, to join that program if that fits them. And that again, that begins the second semester of freshman year. Um, so again, kind of just prepare yourself for the for the possibility that something may change in that area and be ready to have that conversation and support your students. As an academic coach, I work with lots of students who are very nervous about talking to their parents about a change of major. Um, and sometimes I think that that um, conversation and that stress is the, the student is feeling it more um, than the parent is, um, that the parent is not necessarily giving that feeling to their child, but the, the, the child is taking that on. So again, think about how you are framing that conversation with your kid. Um, so what can families do? So here is just a collection of ideas that we think are really helpful um, to get yourself and your child through this transition. So first of all, is really to normalize challenge. Your child will likely experience some unexpected challenges, so we want them to be prepared for that. Um, Simple thing to do is start to share some examples and experiences that you have had with overcoming some obstacle at school or at work. So we want to present those things like they're normal and that they're manageable. Um, talk about a cousin who went off to college and really struggled in a class that they weren't expecting to struggle in and now they are graduated from college and everything went okay. That's a very, um, it's a research proven small intervention that can help to reduce that anxiety and help students understand that asking for help or experiencing those challenges is normal, particularly if they have had a, a kind of a smooth sail through high school, or at least maybe their last 
um, the, the last couple of years of high school were pretty smooth because oftentimes students are using that as their frame, their, their senior year of high school, they're using that as their um, reference point for what their freshman year of college is gonna look like. And they really need to think back to that freshman year of high school um, because they didn't start out their high school career as a, as a senior, um, what, knowing everything. They started out as that freshman who had a lot of stuff to learn. And we want them to know that this is a journey and challenges are gonna be part of that journey. Um, help students maintain perspective and encourage problem solving and then familiarize yourself with the resources that are available if so that if you, when your child comes to you and they will um, with questions or concerns that you can point them in the direction of those resources encouraged use of them. Um, another thing that I encourage is really to put your student in charge starting now if you can and I know that can be stressful um, but we want students to have practice with tasks that they're not usually used to doing now so that we can take some of that off of their plate for the fall because there will be plenty of things for them to be anxious about and for them to have to figure out that they cannot learn in advance. Um, and I think we underestimate how difficult some of those simple things can be like um, having them schedule an appointment at the call and actually schedule the doctor's appointment, pick up a prescription, have to remember to get the insurance card, um, calling the nurse and explaining how they feel and or waiting for a call back from the nurse, managing some of those recurring chores like um, running out of shampoo and deodorant and needing toothpaste, having them start to buy some of those things right now on their own um, and have to replenish that. Talking about grocery shopping, um, again, these tasks can seem minimal, but they can be anxiety producing and they can suck up a lot of time. Um, again, that's time that we can help them spend on their actual classwork and meeting new people and learning to navigate this new college environment. Um, stay connected, but also give them some space. And earlier on, I talked about the, how you can start to frame your relationship with your child to allow them to al allow you to continue to support them even though they are far away from you now and you don't have like proximity control over them so the frequency of contact that you have with your child will change and it should change um so rather than like knowing where my kid is at all times helps me to know that they're safe um maybe changing that perspective to if I don't hear anything, I know that my kid is safe because they will reach out to you if they need something. They will reach out for, to you if they're hungry or they don't have any, they haven't met any friends or if they um, can't find a building or if they don't have any money or if they're sick, they will reach out for those things. Otherwise, we're hoping that they're getting engaged on campus and learning to do some of these things on their own that maybe they haven't done before. Um, we want you to, I'm not um, encouraging like any relationship games here, but I, it, I do think it's healthy for parents to leave some room for your child to need you uh, because they will then reach out when they have to. Um, and then the other thing is just to really to, to, to think long term. Um, make a plan for the new normal at home for yourself. Um, events are going to be missed. Tra family transitions will need to change. And it's important to give students permission to miss those things and to disengage from home just a little bit. Um, because sometimes, again, students can feel like they are still have some of those responsibilities back home and they can't do anything about some of those things now because they're so far away and it's hard for them to stay engaged here on campus when they feel like there are lots of things at home that they have to be uh, worried about like their mom is um how is she gonna um how is the whole cookie making transition gonna go because mom is gonna be really upset because you're not there anymore um those types of things that maybe is a silly example but those types of things really do weigh on students and we want them to feel like it's okay to be engaged here on campus. Um, you'll be, they'll be back home when it's time to visit, but while they're here, it's okay for them to be here. Um, we want to, we know that students who are more engaged on campus have greater academic success. So we want to encourage involvement um, because that involvement, even co-curricular involvement leads to academic success. Okay, so that's the end of um, this presentation. So hopefully these were the goals that I set out at the beginning of the presentation. 
you can have a little bit of perspective on that academic transition that students and families will face, um, some of the resources that are available. And again, you can go back to those slides and start clicking through to see the different things that are available and an understanding of how to best support your child starting now. And again, most of that transition is really about the way that you are the mindset for success and the mindset that this is going to be a different experience. I am well prepared. I did all the things that I needed to do in high school and clearly I'm supposed to be here or the university would not have um, accepted me here. But that doesn't mean that this won't be without challenge. That doesn't mean that this will be a perfectly smooth road. But students who are ready to um, manage that transition and to ask for help and to seek resources um, when they have those challenges are going to be successful. We know that they will. Um, but we need them to, to use the resources that exist. Um, welcome to the family. If you have any questions about academic success using other resources here on campus, please let me know. My um, contact information is there. Check out our website. Lots of great information there. Um, have a wonderful rest of the su summer and we will see you in the fall. Thank you. Sorry, I'm having trouble ending this.